Welcome everyone to LubbockOnline.com. I'm Adam Young. Today is the first segment in AJ Media's candidate debates for election 2014. Here with us today are Lubbock County Precinct 2 Commissioner Mark Heinrich and challenger John David Bruegel. They'll face each other in the Lubbock County Republican primary in March. In this session, we'll ask each candidate to give a one-minute opening statement describing why they're running. Then they'll be asked four questions with one minute to respond to each, followed by closing remarks. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having us. We'll begin with Mr. Bruegel. Why are you running for county commissioner? Um, I'm running for county commissioner because I've had an interest in state government all my life. Um, the county government's kind of a local representation of the state here in Lubbock, and I'd like to be a part of that um, by helping make the process more open, um, by keeping our sales tax from going up, um, and by just encouraging fiscal responsibility in general. And Mr. Heinrich? I'm Mark Heinrich, Lubbock County Commissioner, and it has been an honor and a privilege to serve the citizens of Lubbock County Precinct 2 for the past seven years. Uh, I believe in the direction that Lubbock County is going. I feel that your habits are your destiny and Lubbock County is going in a positive direction in which we work hard each year to have a balanced budget which is set by the state law. Uh, this past year very, I was very instrumental in lowering the tax rate for Lubbock County. Uh, we have a five-year strategic plan in which we look at all issues concerning Lubbock County and then budget appropriately uh, no matter which department it is, whether it is with uh, any department in Lubbock County, whether it's in the road and bridge, uh, financial stability, we're a double A uh, financial uh, rating through the standard and poors. We have uh, low debt. Our only debt currently is the Lubbock County Detention Center, which was 100 percent approved by the voters. Uh, and we have, I am a conservative spending and I demand accountability and I appreciate being here, Adam. Thank you. The first question will go to Mr. Heinrich. What are your thoughts on county employee pay raises, cost of living raises, and pay increases for elected officials, and when should they be implemented? Okay, we look at each year, each budget we have to balance, each year we'll look at the employees. For the last 11 out of 12 years, we have given a cost of living adjustment to all Lubbock County employees, each year for the employees. For the elected officials, it's a different bubble for elected officials. Elected officials have received raises once out of each of the last four years, which is two out of the last eight. So it's, it's very difficult. It is our job as the CFO of Lubbock County to balance the budget and control the purse strings of the county. So to answer your question, Lubbock County employees, not elected officials, have received raises 11 of the last 12 because we feel that we want to retain staff and to retain them you have to pay them a competitive wage but the Lubbock County elected officials have received raises only one of the last four two of the last eight years and Mr. Bruegel I think that it's important that we make sure that our county employees are well paid and that their pay rate is competitive with the rates of private sector jobs that are equivalent as far as raises for elected officials I have committed to my voters from the get-go back in June when I announced my campaign that I would not raise my salary during the four years that I'm elected. Okay, question two goes first to Mr. Bruegel. Are your um, are county roads being maintained adequately and what should be done about them? Sure. Um, right now I think we have a problem in our county road system. Um, driving through the roads of Precinct 2 and even the other county precincts, you'll find that a lot of them are very narrow. Um, and especially at night, that can create, in my opinion, a significant safety hazard. I think it's time we start looking for ways to where we can fund our road system. Not That way, we can make these roads wider and improve them that way. And Mr. Heinrich? Uh, obviously, it's a problem. Uh, looking for ways. I've dealt with, with the legislator. I talked to Charles Perry today, working on issues to widen county roads. Yes, it is an issue, but everybody needs to understand the funding comes from the Road and Bridge Motor Vehicle $10 registration sticker. There are 240,000 registered vehicles in Lubbock County. So our total budget for Road and Bridge is 2.4 million. We have 300 miles of paved roads. Uh, we have a five-year strategic plan in which we widen roads around the county each year, paved roads. Uh, the cost is about $30,000 per mile to widen it. 300 miles, that's almost $10 million to widen the county roads. The money is not there when our total revenue budget is $2.4 million a year in the Road and Bridge Fund. It's just, it's just not attainable. Are they needed? Absolutely. Do we work well with the legislation? We have a CTERS grant, which we're currently working on now with legislation. Uh, they appropriated $225 million out of that part through oil revenue, uh, oil uh, traffic 
our part is 342,000. It's 80 20 grant split. So we continue to work on that on a daily basis. It is the issue, but the revenue is the problem that we can't widen all of them. We do them in a five year strategic plan. Okay, and uh, the third question also goes to Mr. Heinrich first. What are the top two issues facing the county, and how would you address them? Uh, we top two issues. Well, there's a lot of issues. Top two, we looked at the patrol two years ago in the unincorporated area. The sheriff felt that the response time it, it was 24 minutes, so we increased the patrol in the unincorporated area by seven patrolmen and seven Tahoes. We've got reports back now that we've decreased the response time down to approximately 12 minutes, so we've cut it in half. Uh, so, so that is a major issue. We looked at the DA's office two years ago when he wanted to retain some experienced prosecutors. Uh, so uh, that is important too because you know that, that's our job. We want to we want to public safety is is one of the important things that that we need to make sure that we do a good job at. But we only have so many dollars each year, and so. Each year you have to look at all the issues and then we go line by line in the budget each year. Last year we, we cut $3 million out of all the line items in order to accomplish uh, lowering the tax rate for this year. So it's a, it's a, a long summer process to, to meet the balance and meet the growing needs of Lubbock County. And Mr. Bruegel? The first issue I think is long-term planning. Several years ago we had to build a new jail. I think everyone agrees about that. Even the voters agreed they, they voted for a bond proposal to pay for it. Um, we incurred a significant amount of debt having to do that. Um, and I think if we had to do something like that again, it would hurt our county financially. So I think we need to start looking, at, looking ahead, not only five years, but 10 and 20 years, and see if there are ways we can plan our budget to be prepared for when those kind of things happen. Um, secondly, I think it's a matter of open government, keeping our county government not only to where folks can come to us, but being open to our citizens, having town hall meetings in the district. I've lived in Lubbock my whole life, and I can't remember a time I've heard of a county commissioner having a town hall meeting. I would do that from day one. Okay, and our fourth question will go to Mr. Bruegel to start. What background or qualifications set you apart from your opponent? Sure. Uh, my opponent doesn't have any experience with the state legislature, uh, working directly there in Austin. Uh, I had the opportunity to work for a state representative for the, in the 83rd legislative session. Um, and that really helped me understand how state government works. Um, the county's interaction with state government is very significant uh, since, the state is a since the county is a constitutional subdivision of the state. And Mr. Heinrich? Uh, seven years as county commissioner balancing a budget. Uh, we do work well with the legislation. Uh, I have a meeting with Charles Perry next week to talk about CTARS and some other issues. Uh, we go to Austin frequently to meet with them. Uh, yeah, constitutionally we have to balance each year and we do balance each year, but the state legislature has issues too in which they only have so much appropriations of funds. So uh, we work well with them. Uh, lived in Lubbock County Precinct 2 for 52 years. Uh, graduate of Texas Tech University. Married to my lovely wife of 26 years, a 20-year-old son, an 18-year-old daughter. Uh, Texas Tech alumni, president of Slayton Economic Development Corporation, South Plains Government uh, Board of Directors, uh, just recently appointed to the Texas Social Counties, CIRA, County Information Resources, uh, for the Texas Social Counties as their board of directors just recently uh, for that. So uh, United Way Campaign Cabinet, uh, Catholic Diocese Red Mass Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Heinrich. And now, gentlemen, please talk, take about a minute for closing remarks, starting with Mr. Heinrich. Uh, it has been an honor and privilege to service the citizens of Lubbock County for these past seven years. Uh, I look forward to seeking my third term as Lubbock County Commissioner uh, this year. I appreciate your vote. Uh, we are open, transparent. Uh, my, my door is always open. My personal cell phone is available to anybody, anytime. My home phone rings uh, very, fairly often, people that have issues. And, and, and my uh, uh, lifestyle or have a, a uh, what's the word I'm using, open, transparent, and, and uh, that honesty, fairness, and that uh, I research the issues. If anybody has a problem, I look at the issues, research them, and get back with them. Whenever I was campaigning in 2006, I officiated basketball for 15 years. And my goal was at the end of the game to make losing parents happy like the winning parents were happy. And this is the same thing in this business, that we, we try to research the issues and try to make you know, the ones that have an agenda happy. And it's, uh, sometimes it gets very difficult. That's our job to research and study to come up with the best decisions for Lubbock County. 
Thank you, Mr. Heinrich and Mr. Bruegel. Well, first I want to thank the Avalanche Journal for hosting this debate. I really appreciate that you all are making an effort to um, educate our voters about the issues in this race. You know, as I've been walking the streets of Lubbock County, um, talking to voters about their concerns, I'm reminded of why I love living in this town so much. We have some of the friendliest and most hardworking people around, and it would be an honor to serve them as their next county commissioner. So I'd like to ask you, voters of Precinct 2, if I could have your vote and serve you for the next four years as your county commissioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us today. Early voting begins February 18th for the March 4th primary. The general election is November 4th. And remember, as you prepare for voting, you can learn more about the election at LubbockOnline.com and in the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Thank you for taking the time to watch our debate. I'm Adam Young, and this is LubbockOnline.com.